Hey, what's up guys? So recently I've been asked a lot to do some more vlog style content. So with that, I am showing you my day to day. So with my day, I am going off to London. I'm on the train up there. I'm going there independently, which can be a big deal for some wheelchair users, but I'm going to show you how you can just about get away with it. So I'm going to be taking the train up because I've got a meeting there later on today. And I'll show you basically what it's all about, really. Uh, hopefully you might see some tips or tricks, or maybe it gives you the confidence to really go out there and do it yourself. So let's enjoy. Attended on the station. Luggage left unattended may be removed without warning or destroyed or damaged by the security services. A connecting rail service to Livington Town, Livington Pier and Yarmouth Island. Okay guys, so annoyingly I had the plan for this video to be on the train and sort of explain what I'm going to explain to you, um, but as you saw there were some people in the disabled spaces uh, with a push chair and that meant that not only could I not get in the disabled area because they refused to move, but I couldn't really do my filming because there were screaming kids around, it's Easter holidays, probably could have planned it better on the day that I was going to do this sort of video, but hey, that's, you know, part of what happens, so no worries. So, as I said, I was going to plan on speaking about this on the train, but I've written it all down instead and I'm going to explain to you here now. Luckily, they did move for me in the end, um, but I'll get on to a bit about what it's like dealing with other passengers while you're on the train. So, yeah, let's get on with uh, the information that I wanted to give you. All right, so the first recommendation I give you is to get a rail card. So before you book any sort of ticket, make sure you get a disabled rail card in the UK. So what these do is take a third off your bill for you and somebody traveling with you. So train travel is really expensive, so, and these cards cost about £20. So on that first try, so even if you go on just one trip, you normally save money, especially if you're traveling with other people. Uh, normally a trip to London for me, return and my girlfriend normally cost about £100. So, you know, a third of that is about 30 to £35, pounds, depending on, you know, what the price is initially. Um, and the car's £20, so I'm still saving £10. So, seriously, get that rail card. It's a really great investment. Um, and I got to London or use a train several different times and I've saved lots and lots of money by using that disabled rail card. You can find that by just going on, typing in disabled rail cards. Uh, onto Google and you'll easily find it. Okay, so my second tip is to call ahead if you've got an unmanned station. Now what I mean by that is that not every train station has like an office like where you can book tickets and that. Some of them are just literally a station where you get on a train and get off a train. I recommend if you are getting to one of those, either if you're arriving at it or getting like or you're coming to it, either way make sure you call ahead and let them know that you need your ramp basically. So not all stations, well, no stations that I know of, um, that you can get on and off the train without a ramp. So make sure you call ahead so they've got someone there or the train conductor can come off and he can help you on and off. Now, if you're a manned one, then it's less of an issue, but if you're not sure that much, then really call ahead just to make sure that you can get that ramp um, I've been doing this lots and lots and lots. So for me, what I do, I go from a man station to a man station most of the time. So with that, I can just arrive about 15 minutes early, which I recommend you doing anyway, so you everything's all right. Arrive there 15 minutes early, let them know that I need to get on, what the train needs to get on when it's meant to be arriving, and then they can get somebody from the train station to come and help me on to the train itself. Once there, then I let them know where I'm getting on and off, and basically from there, they will tell me um, that they got somebody at the other end. And normally throughout the journey, they let you know that if they change conductors, then 
they've already told the next person. So they're pretty good normally at telling you, um, or keeping you informed anyway. Uh, so second tip about with the getting on and off the train. So they have ramps at uh, every station and they also have them on the train itself. So there's never ever really a situation where you cannot get on and off the train. But I will recommend if you're going from a very large station like a London station or a major city, they normally have gates, but uh, man, uh, like no, they're not manned. You have to scan your ticket and you go through the gate. Now, there's normally a load in a row and then at the end, there's a bigger one. So I'll show you a bit of pictures here. There's a bigger one there. Make sure you go to that larger one because you probably won't fit through the smaller one. So there is one for you. Push chairs now also go through or people with large luggage. But don't worry, that's the one that you need to go through. Once you go through those, make sure you find the person in the orange jacket. Now, with the larger stations, you're probably not going to be able to call up ahead and say that you're going to be getting on that train. The communication isn't that great. So when you get there, so I was at Waterloo coming back yesterday and instead of seeing the people in the regular uniforms or the yellow jackets, make sure you go through that gate and find someone in an orange jacket. So it's an orange fluorescent jacket. and tell them because they're the people that actually help people on and off the train they're the people on the platforms and they work with the conductors the people in the yellow jackets just work for the um station itself and they just help people through the gates so make sure you get those people in those orange jackets okay so make sure when you get on that train that you basically go to the door with a disabled logo on so go find that person or if you call ahead depending on what station you're at Find the door that's got a disabled logo on. Normally they point you towards it and if someone's waiting there with a ramp, but if they're busy helping other people out, just find the door with a disabled logo on and just wait there for them and you'll normally get some help because that's normally the door they come on and off of anyway. So even if you can't find that person in that orange jacket, they might be able to help you by coming out of that exit. Okay, so by now you should be on the train and like I showed you earlier, there is a disabled area on the train. Here's a little footage of me getting in and out there, like I did eventually because the people did get off at a station just before I did. So I managed to show a little bit of footage there of me getting on. It's just wheeling into it backwards, putting your back against it. And they've got a table you can flip out. So I like to lean on it or you can just put your phone and bag on there too. Okay, so when you're on the train, it's normally pretty simple. Now, this is the point I was going to say a little bit earlier when there was the people on the train and they're in my space. Now, what happened is the conductor came along and they asked if they could move. Um, and they refused to because they were getting off in a little bit, but he did insist. And then I was, I just said to them, it's fine for a minute, but for health and safety reasons, they prefer you in that disabled space. But I said that I was fine against there where I was at the time. So if you're in a situation now, I fairly balanced in my wheelchair. So not being in that disabled space isn't the end of the world for me. But if you are somebody that is, talk to the conductor if there's any problem with any other members of public on the train. So say there is people in the same space and they're just refusing to move, talk to that conductor and they can get the situation sorted um, pretty right pretty quickly because at the end of the day, you get priority over everybody else. It doesn't matter if there's a push chair, loads of luggage, no matter what, you get priority if you're in a wheelchair. Because for health and safety reasons, basically, if you fall over and hurt yourself, not only do they not want you to hurt yourself, but you know, that lands them in big trouble, um, much more trouble than they would if somebody with a pushchair was in the way. So make sure you uh, talk to the conductor if you have any issues when you're on board. They're normally, I mean, I found that every single conductor is really friendly people and they're really easy to talk to. So make sure you talk to them if you have any issues when on board. Okay, so another point about members of public, normally, nine times out of ten they are really really helpful and really really useful so if you do have any issues say someone's got a bag in the way just ask them politely say excuse me i need to get into this space or i need to just move here can you just help me can you just move your bag for me so i can get there and as i say nine times out of ten they're really really helpful people you do get a few ones but don't let those people put you off because hey at the end of the day it's you got to get to your destination just try and make the situation as best as possible and ask politely and as I said, most of the time, if you ask politely, people help you out. So don't worry about that. Okay, so lastly, I just want to talk about the toilets on board. So when you're on the train, you get a disabled space and you're normally really close to a toilet that is accessible. Now, when I say accessible, it's accessible to a point. You know, you're not going to have a lift. You're not going to have all these other fancy gadgets. But basically, you can get a wheelchair in there. I recommend personally, what I do is make sure the last thing I do before I get on the train is to go to the toilet. And then when I get to the other end, to go to the toilet again. Now, if you're going to a major city like London or any other one, sometimes they have paid toilets when you get there. 
Now this is a pain, especially if you haven't got a hand function like me because it's coin operated and those coins are bloody fiddly. So if you do get to one and it's really like you're desperate to go, I recommend leaving the station and going to a pub or something. Because normally around train stations, there's normally facilities like pubs or restaurants or things and they're normally pretty good at letting disabled people use it even if you're not a customer. So for example, when I got to Waterloo, I got off the train and right in front of you there's a toilet and that's fine, yeah, but you have to use a 20p to get in there and it's a real pain. So what I did is just exited, went down in the lift, came out the front and then right in front of you there's five pubs. So I just went to the first one and went to the toilet there. So it makes life a lot easier that when you do that. But I recommend you plan before. So maybe go Google Maps, just find some restaurants, maybe call them up if you really like need to know specific things about their toilet, just so you can get there and make sure that it's all right for you. All right then guys, so that is my video on how to travel in the UK via train. So basically I just wanna hear about your stories on trains. If you had any bad experiences, any good experiences, let me know down below. Hopefully this video would help you and if it did, then you can help me by subscribing to the channel. That would be a really big, big help. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.